Okay, well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Nord Business Hub. Let's Grow Power Hour, episode four. This segment will be hosted by Mrs. Kimberly Williams, the CEO of FemWorks LLC and founder of Ford Ever NJ. And me, Tony Michelle McClammy, the CEO of ISM and the co-producer of the Feral Felt Show. I would like to introduce our special guest, Melissa Ambers is the president and chief administrative officer of Paperless Ex Expert. She's an extraordinary paperless expert and project manager with over 15 years of experience. She and her team offer tools and expert advice to produce top quality work. Our next guest is Lindsay C. Holmes. She is the CEO of Usable Tech Company. She has authored, listen now, authored five books and speak on stages across the world. Lindsay is the Evernote Entrepreneurship Ambassador and the Evernote Business Cons um, Certified Consultant. We got powerhouses on this blab today. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. So what I would like to see happen now, what are you both doing in your businesses? Melissa, if you can start off and share with us. Well, um, you know, as for paperless expert um, is, you know, of course, constantly building up the clientele and working with, you know, solopreneurs, you know, the ones as, you know, we'll probably talk about later on that budget that don't have a lot and want to get, you know, started, don't know what tools to use, how to become efficient and just cut costs. So that's what we do at Paperless Expert. And we help, you know, many entrepreneurs to gain those resources so they can continue to be to grow and be profitable. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, what about you, Lindsay? Let's, what are you doing in your business nowadays? We can't hear you, huh? Nope. We can't hear you. Well, why uh, Lindsay is fixing her communication, um, Kim, why don't you share your experience um, at the SXSW in Austin, Texas, this huge festival that you just came from last week? Oh, you mean South by Southwest? Yes. <laughs> well, I uh, I actually had the opportunity to go to South by Southwest uh, with my colleagues from Rutgers Business School. So we were representing the Newark Business Hub. And it was actually Lindsay Holmes that really emphasized to me that I need to make sure I make my way to South by Southwest and um, I took her advice. And so the 2016 South by Southwest, which is actually its 30th year as a music, film and interactive industry uh, festival. And it, it truly is all encompassing uh, in the city of Austin, Texas. And uh, certainly Lindsay could talk to you more about it. I believe she's been there six or seven times up to now and has also presented. Uh, but so much that I took away from the conversation and the experience of South by Southwest, two major things. Uh, well, I say three major things. One, that every technology that I was looking for uh, to help my business grow in the areas of film, broadcast, uh, interactive media, um, and other technologies that can help monetize my business that I'm, I'm planning on expanding. I found all of those kind of technologies right there at South by Southwest. Um, the other thing that I saw is big in business and I'm trying to figure out how to integrate it into my product offering is virtual reality technology, you know, which, which brings together 
video as well as, um, you know, mobile technology and just gives you this kind of immersive experience. Virtual reality was off the hook at South by Southwest. I mean, everywhere you went, there were, you know, that was the main attraction that drew the longest lines. Um, so it was, a, it was an amazing experience for me to network, to be exposed to the new uh, technology as well as the uh, workshops. So Lindsay, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So um, long enough for you to, um, you know, figure that out. Okay. So first point, um, I own a digital marketing and tech agency. And what's new for my business is really a focus specifically on productivity. So I've been in the uh, digital marketing industry right from inception about 10 years ago and have always really tried to stay on the cutting edge. And the next sort of phase of tech is really productivity. Um, people aren't as organized as they wanna be, and they really see the benefits of having that sort of inclusion of, you know, of, of uh, productivity, of that sort of work-life balance, that being really organized, you know, automating your tasks, you know, really gives you, you know, you can travel. I'm still in Austin now. And I'm able to, you know, be away from my desk because I'm not chained to my desk. Um, you know, I've, I'm focusing on on paperless technology like Melissa. Why don't we know each other, sis? I mean, this, oh, no. this is so small. So I can't wait to really get to know you. Absolutely. But, you know, so I mean, and all of that, it just really allows you to live your dream. So that's really where my focus is in terms of productivity. Now, in terms of South by, um, this is my fifth year at South by. And I found that South by Southwest and another conference, um, CES, for my industry, are just the two most productive conferences for me to attend every year. So um, what South by really has done for me has been, um, has given me like pivotal networking. And so at South by, what I really focus on um, are, you know, rekindling those contacts that I've met the years before, um, I've made major contracts at South by, um, you know, it's just really a robust networking experience. And it's kind of what people say when you network, like on the golf course, um, you know, you're just having a good time, you're attending concerts and, you know, you just see old friends. So that really is a very efficient way to network. So that's what South by is really about for me. Okay. Well, we have a quick question for you, Lindsay. What is pivotal networking? Well, I mean, you know, it's productive networking. So, you know, I used to attend um, and all over the country or the world, actually, networking events, right? So I'd spend all this money on these conferences and I found that the benefits weren't there, right, in terms of the output. So I had to find the conferences where networking was at its height. Um, and like I said, for me in my industry, that was CES and South by, I could also get some of that, you know, that thought leadership, some of that knowledge, but also meet the players and the players go to those two events for me. So that's kind of that, that really solid networking um, that as a small business, I needed to find because I just couldn't afford the output of all the different conferences and smaller networking events. Wow, wow, wow. I, have to, I have to agree with, with that experience. So, I mean, we're talking about operational efficiency. So how do you, you know, network on a very high level? And I found that to be very true in terms of my experience out South by Southwest. I mean, I met with, you know, a marketing, uh, officer for Coca-Cola, for McDonald's, for, you know, major food brands all in one hour, you know, and was able to have substantial conversations with uh, other vendors that, that offer technologies I mentioned earlier that I can easily incorporate into my business workflow to help me monetize the content that I'm already doing. So, it was in an afternoon, extremely highly productive uh, as compared to, um, 
other networking events that I might get in my backyard or even in my region. So it was worth uh, going to uh, Austin, Texas for that. And thank you, Lindsay. You're welcome. <laughs> wow, I, I have to be in the house next year. Absolutely. I mean, me, too. me too. Yeah. Who and there's away from us and Melissa, we weren't in the house. Something is wrong with that picture. We gotta yeah. be. Yeah, and there's something at South by for everybody. I mean, there's so many verticals. There's an education vertical. There's even a fashion vertical. So it really is a place that everybody can go and these industries can converge because they're converging now anyway, right? So you got fashion tech, you know, you have tech tech. So you have so educational tech. So, you know, it all kind of converges. So you should go to a place where, you know, where it converges. So South by, my wow. little plug for South by. Oh, well, you did a good job at plugging. <laughs> well, um, Melissa, let's um, ask you a few questions. What are the best tools for creating a plan and a master schedule, schedule for successful business operations for entrepreneurs? Well, what I tell um, a lot of my clients is there's a lot of tools. I mean, it's just so many out there that you can utilize, but I always tell you know, be sure what works for you, not what other people are using, not what your friend are using, because each tool is different, you know, based on your business. Everyone has different business needs and you you work differently in your business. So do your research, find out what works best for you and what you're comfortable with. Because, you know, one may be used to one, like, oh yeah, this works fine, I could do this, this, this. But you get it and you may not be as techy or don't have a need for a lot of the, um, the the systems that's there. So do your research, figure out what works best for you and your business and also your clients, because that's going to be a part of how you do your day to day. So um, it's, it's just a matter of doing your research because, I mean, I could list, we could probably be on here for hours to go through all of them. There's so many out there, but. Um, just be smart and pick the one that works more efficiently for you and your business. Now, do you have two that you can recommend? And Lindsay, I'd like you to answer after she's finished. Um, two that I would recommend. One, first and foremost, especially someone on a shoestring budget, one of the major tools will be a calendar, Google Calendar. That's simple, it's free. Um, that's the number one thing that you should do. And um, face camp, you know, that's a simple project management tool that can be used. And with those being said, I'm all about paperless and being online. So, you know, we all have the tablets, iPads, smartphones, and all of these, you know, things. So be sure all of your devices are synced together. That's where a lot of people make their mistake is they'll have the iPad logged into one account, cell phone logged into another account. And, oh, I can't get my stuff. And then they're double dipping. Be sure all devices are signed into the same account and you don't have to worry about it. You're working more efficiently and you have everything at your hand reach without having to look at three different devices to figure out what you're doing or what you may need to do. Absolutely. Well, you know, I can attest to the two things you just recommended. Um, and, and this is for all the entrepreneurs. You, you know, I'm one of you. I live by my Google Calendar. Yes. <laughs> if it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. And that's my Google Calendar. And yeah. FemWork operated our business for, I would say, eight years on Basecamp. Eight years, every project that we did for eight years, we managed it on Basecamp. Now, we're not using Basecamp right now. Um, we migrated to a different platform, but sometimes we miss Basecamp because Basecamp was good. You know, I think it's a good solution. So I appreciate that you shared that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and just to piggyback on the calendar, if you have multiple projects that you're working on or multiple businesses, in that same account, you can set up different calendars. A lot of people don't know that and they ask the question, set up however many it is, set up all those calendars in that one account so you don't need to have multiple 
Gmail accounts to be able to have that capability. Absolutely. Well, Lindsay, do you have any pointers? Oh, I have tools all day. Um, the sort of crux of my workflow is being automated. Um, I'm a busybody. I don't like to be, uh, you know, constricted to a desk. Um, you know, I like to travel. So automating a lot of my processes early on is really what help, what's helped me. Um, you know, my core tool is um, Evernote. Evernote is kind of like an all-inclusive hub of everything. And you guys use the word sync, but I'll offer the word integrate, right? Looking at a tool that has integrations is key. Whenever you have A, developers that think a tool is good enough to build for it, that's when you know you have a tool that will have some longevity, um, that's a, a solid tool. So, you know, a tool like Evernote, a tool like um, Google Apps, they have a bunch of integrations. And what that really, really means is that all the tools that you use will talk well together, right? And that's the height of productivity, having sort of like a hub, like one place that you can do most things in, and then these other integrations can come along and make that workflow seamless. So I start with Evernote and then I look for the integrations that work well with Evernote. Um, one of those integrations that I can't live without is if this, then that. I-F-T-T-T, -T -T, Tom, Tom, Tom. And what that is, it's a, actually an old school uh, methodology, um, automator actions. Your Mac has them, it's kind of a techie thing, but if this, then that made it sort of lay, right? It made it for laymen. And what it does is it asks if this, then that. So what that means is if, if the weather is gonna be this, then send me an alert, right? So I can now plan what I need to wear. Um, and you can do if this then that for really basic things or really robust things. I use if this then that to automate my social media. So if the New York Times um, publishes an article on tech or social media, you know, in my wheelhouse, then I'll have that content sent out through my Facebook and Twitter. And what that does for me, you know, as an agency, as a small business, is it alleviates some of the stress of always having to come up with new content. And it's free. If this and that is completely free and it automates everything from, like I said, your social to the weather to the apps you already use. You can schedule, um, you know, social media content through your Google calendar. I mean, and it's just a way to kind of uh, piecemeal um, a hub, right? It's a way to, to get a really solid program for your business without spending a lot of money. So IFTTT, -T -T, and I'll actually write it in the messages. T -T -T. Wow. So those Let are my two core things. Okay. Well, ladies, you know, that Google Calendar, I agree with Kim, that is the tool. I mean, because it, it gives you an alert to your phone. And I mean, that helps me a lot. 15 minutes before something is supposed to happen. And you know, the busy life of an entrepreneur, we don't know the difference between morning and evening. We just know we grinding, that's it. Right. So thank you ladies for these wonderful tools. Um, I know Kim, you wanted to talk about um, the programs with Rutgers. Yeah, I mean, Lindsay Bolt, you graduated from the EPI program and we're innovating on the EPI program with the Newark Business Hub. And actually we have live several of the Newark Business Hub fellows. And I just wanna know, you know, here we are, we're creative suppliers. We're, you know, trying to have greatest efficiency and greatest uh, uh, profitability. How can we leverage you know, our Rutgers affiliation or our fact that we are a, a group or a hub, as you said, you know, hubs have the greatest efficiency. So we are a hub. How can we leverage Rutgers in that experience to, um, to even have greater efficiency? I mean, how can we through the, the courses or through Rutgers resources, how can we better leverage that in the name of operational efficiency? Well, I think this blab, number one, is ingenious. 
Um, you know, I'm usually putting people onto tools. Kim, you put me onto Blab, so thank you. I think collaborating in this way is productive, not waiting until we're in the same room, until we have a, a, you know, a need, collaborating continuously, sharing new tools through a vehicle like this is the number one way. Um, but I'll tell you my experience with EPI, um, you know, I slept on EPI, I did, because I felt like it was um, too much of the basics, right? I felt like it was, you know, taking me back to, to these fundamentals and not giving me enough of the, the tech that I, I you know, yearn for all the time. But you know, years later, I'm now seeing the benefits of EPI because I needed to go back to those basics. And I think entrepreneurs, we're so in, our, in the hustle that we tend to forget those sort of um, you know, programmatic basics that we really need to revisit or we can't progress. So, you know, an EPI, a Newark business, business Hub, will really um, sort of center you and sit you down enough to look at, um, you know, kind of programmatic planning. Um, you know, I even did stuff on paper and I was like, you know, I'm not doing anything on paper, you know, I'm paperless. But sometimes you just need to kind of go to the drawing board and mind map some things out and that really kind of changed the trajectory of my business because I didn't even realize that I was moving a little too fast. So I think the balance of, you know, of an EPI, of a Newark business hub with those fundamentals and collaborations like this where we can share tools is really key. If I could follow up uh, now, when we were in Austin, I remember talking about uh, or rather you were sharing about um, a platform with, that you use for both marketing and um, to kind of drive awareness and, and build a, a sales pipeline. And that platform was uh, Fiverr.com. Yes. And uh, I remember you talked about using that platform, not because it was necessarily a high transaction number in terms of revenue, but it was great around helping your marketing. Yes. Um, and I say that because in the New York Business Hub, we're working as groups. So there are about 25 entrepreneurs and we're working in these smaller groups of about four or five to develop an individual project. Mm. The group that I'm participating in, we are uh, exploring our project being the development of a similar type platform but for creative suppliers in the Newark market, right? So imagine- With the same price? Five dollars, okay. Not necessarily. Like our, the first market that we would be interested in engaging is more so a corporate client. So we're okay. trying to, you know, develop a, a, a platform that can help facilitate transactions like Fiverr does for creative entrepreneurs. Can you talk about a little bit about how you leverage platforms like that, not only to drive revenue, uh, but to help you with your your marketing and, and getting a pipeline going? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, you know, and you guys will have the propensity to do this. You only give away your services in this way if you can find um, a non, you know, monetary benefit as well, right? So it's only $5 for the services I do on Fiverr, but they have a load of traffic. So I can, you know, sort of negotiate that, that expense because of the amount of traffic and visibility I get. Um, you know, also you have reviews on a Fiverr. Those are really key. So people can see your work, right? Like your testimonials on a LinkedIn. Those people really do look at those, especially um, in this economy where trust, right, becomes an issue. So, you know, for me on Fiverr, having my profile up first and foremost, um, you know, I tell people, uh, my social media clients as well, to always have a complete virtual footprint. So make sure you fill out that about us on every profile you have. Um, and, you know, on sites with high traffic, it's really beneficial. So on Fiverr, just that profile alone has really helped me, right? You know, through search, people can find me. And that's probably 
within like the six, um, you know, top links that they find me under is Fiverr. So on Fiverr, I offer services that are scalable, meaning they're not a huge output because it's $5, right? So I offer templates related to my business that I've compiled over the years. Um, I do offer a service uh, called a brand re review where I look at um, you know, a client's profiles and give them tips, which is something I would do for free anyway. And it's something that we've all done for free as entrepreneurs. So it's something that I enjoy doing um, that you know, um, allows me to help people but it's also scalable because it doesn't take me much time. And then, like I said, you know, the, the payback for me are those reviews. So I ask people, you know, if I'm gonna give you this service, all I ask in return is a review. And you'll just find that the traffic that you get, you know, the reviews, um, you know, it, it translates not only into a little pocket change on Fiverr, but into, outside clients. Um, you know, I've gotten the majority of my referrals of my business over the last four years from Fiverr. So it actually does, you know, sort of come off of that, that $5 and turn into uh, repeat clients. So it's really, and that's part of being an entrepreneur, right? Um, looking for uh, creative ways to get business, um, you know, leveraging uh, platforms larger than yourself. Um, but also scaling, right? And so not letting people take advantage of your services, but finding a way to justify those services. So that's what a Fiverr can do. And I think Newark Business Hub um, will take some other factors in mind because it will be a local service. Um, it will be such a specially niched service. So I think if anybody can do it um, and do it right, you guys should. And you should model it on a Fiverr and, you know, you would definitely take a look at the pricing. But I think the fact that these are, um, you know, services earmarked uh, for for local people by by local people will make a big difference. Absolutely. And thanks for sharing that story, because, yeah, that's present right now. Actually, we have class tomorrow. So shout out to the Newark Business Hub fellows and I'll see you tomorrow morning at nine at Rutgers Business School as we continue to work on our next level business plans as a as a collaborative. Awesome. Wow. I hope everybody is enjoying all of this wonderful information. I mean, it's so robust of information that will help excel your business. Now I have a question. Um, highly creative entrepreneurs are rule breakers who don't like to conform to the norms and the traditions of the industry. Most of the time we like to do it how we wanna do it because we're creatives. We're all over the place, some people are. What would you recommend to an established practice to get them organized and tell them, look, this is the new world. You have to get organized as a creative entrepreneur if you want your business to be sustainable. Absolutely. You want me to go, Melissa? It, I can okay. there you go. Um, first and foremost, slow down. <laughs> So many of us is, is, you know, we go on a running store, we try to do everything and, you know, we have these people call us, I need to go here, I need to see this, I need to do this. Just slow down because what happens is, is that we're running so fast and we're trying to do so many different things. As you say, Tony, we're trying to be creative <laughs> and, you know, try to do things at the box and not to do the same thing as the next person. So evaluate. Stop, evaluate, look at what you're doing, pay attention to your surroundings. And it's, if you're going to look at what everybody else is doing to not do what they are doing, you might need to pay attention to what they are doing to see what you're not doing correctly. Mm. And some of those is that when, 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 when you do that, you're not, um, you know, looking at yourself completely. You're missing out on opportunities. 
And because you're moving so fast and you're forgetting about simple things as your back office. You know, I've talked to people before. Oh, I don't have a back office. If you're in business, you have a back office. And they forget about that. And when you forget about that, you get behind on emails. You miss things on your calendar. You forget about projects. Deadlines are coming. You overbook. You take on more work than you can handle. And it's just a matter of getting it in. So I would say slow down. Um, utilize online tools, get you a project management tool, a CRM tool, and be mm -hmm. sure to use it to the best of your ability. If you're not sure how to use it, YouTube people, youtube.com, mm -hmm. everything is on YouTube. And watch the instruction of videos. Um, if it's too technical for you, push it to the side, find something else. It's too many out there for anyone to say, I can't find something that's easy or I can't find something that I can use. And the other thing is to not to try to be a jack of all trades. We have to learn how to outsource regardless Absolutely. of our budget. Um, if you have a small budget, outsource it in pieces, you know, phase it out. Do a little bit at a time. Don't try to do everything now. And you understand business is not an overnight success. So there are times that it may take you a year to get to where you want to be. Instead of just saying, hey, I want to be in business now. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Slow down. Do it the right way. Because I promise you it will pay off if you do it the right way. Do your homework. Do your research. Ask questions. And just pay attention to your surroundings. And sometimes it's not so bad. Because you can learn from what you see on social media is right there in front of you. So um, a lot of things that's right in front of us, we just simply don't see it. So just start paying attention to your surroundings, slow down, um, select the right tools for you, um, utilize your resources, and don't try to do it alone. That's great advice. Great advice. Lindsay, do you have anything? Yeah, you know, I, I think first and foremost, um, creatives should be allowed to focus on their art. And so when you actually have, um, you know, come to terms with the fact that you are creative or whoever you are and you're able to drill down on that, that's the height of productivity. Right. And you should spend time doing that. A lot of us you know, are so busy trying to conform or change that we become very unproductive because we're trying to do the things that we're not good at. And it's gonna take us longer because we're not good at those things. So knowing that you're creative, knowing that, you know, like for me, for example, I'm a talker. I know that when I go to South by, I'm not gonna sit down in a session for too long because I have FOMO, fear of missing out, and I'm gonna feel like there's so much around me and I need to be meeting people. So I don't even you know, force myself to do that anymore. I go out in the streets and I meet the people that I'm supposed to meet anyway. That's me. You know, The first year I was so nervous about going to all of these sessions. And then you know, I realized the next year that they overlap for a reason. They want you to sort of get out. So I think we put you know, restrictions on ourselves that are, are needless. Um, one thing I do with my clients is I meet them where they are and I tell them that. So, you know, I have clients that are, you know, really established professionals, you know, lawyers, doctors, and they are, you know, by today's standards, extremely disorganized, right? They'll mm -hmm. use and, and, and antiquated, you know, by their standards. So they'll use, I have a client that uses Excel to manage his expenses and, you know, I could have put him on Expensify and did this whole workflow around all this stuff that he would feel uncomfortable with. But instead, you know, I eased him into, um, you know, to the to the Expensify through Evernote. Um, Evernote lets you add an Excel spreadsheet into a note. He can edit his sheet there. And so now I got him on this tool that he didn't, you know, he de if he wasn't going to do Expensify, he definitely wasn't going to do Evernote. But he got into Evernote because he saw that he could organize these, you know, these Excel sheets. Right. So once we started doing the Excel sheets, he then started seeing, you know, the power.
of you know automating those same expenses through Expensify. So you just kind of meet people where they are, and they'll kind of see the benefits, you know, in their own way. So right. you know that's that's pretty much it for for creatives. You know, I think half the battle is is realizing who you are, and once you have that, then it's all uphill. Wow. Well, we have a question. The question is, what is CRM? Who wants to take that question? Can you tell us what that is? That's a customer relation um, management tool. So um, it's pretty much a one-stop shop of where you can manage your customers. You can have their contact information. Um, there's one called Insightly that I've used and you can email directly into Insightly uh, for a particular projects. You can set up your leads. You can set up, you know, budgets. I mean, there's just so many different things you can set up in a one-stop shop. So that's one of those efficient tools that that's on the list to utilize for uh, maintaining efficiency in your office. Hmm. And, and, no. and what, I'm sorry. Can no, I, my, let me just piggyback on the CRM. Um, okay. what's, what's productive about it, again, is kind of that hub feel. So if I'm going to a meeting with a client, I can add a link to, you know, the, the, the meeting location. Right. I can add the support emails to that client. So not only do I have their number and their address, um, their, you know, their invoices, if we need to talk about that, it's all in one place. So it's just it's just linking that to that client. So CRMs are really, really important. Right. Okay. Well, what I wanted to just say, we had a question. What are the best CRMs out there? I know you mentioned one or two. Do you have one that you would recommend for a creative entrepreneur um, that's not that very savvy, but something that they can use to stay organized with their business? Insight is very right. simple. Yeah. It's, um, for me, that's the simplest one out there. It's straight to the point. It's not a lot of fluff. Um, it's just pretty much logging in. And the good thing about Insightly as well that I didn't I mention is if you already have a database in Excel uh, or some other spreadsheet, you can actually import them into Insightly or your Google contacts into Insightly. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to import your entire list. It'll actually let you check off who you want to uh, include in Insightly. And then you could just, you know, build from there and put, when I say all the information, I mean, like she said, it's a hub. Mm -hmm. it's a hub. So that, that's the I one agree. that I would recommend. I agree, and Sightly's good. Salesforce is probably the most known. Um, I think it's a little harder than Insightly. Um, mm -hmm. I'll tell you before there was an Insightly, Salesforce was pretty much it, and it was very expensive. So I made my own kind of manual CRM with Evernote. You know, I, I'm a proponent of Evernote and like, let me just give a disclaimer, I don't get paid by Evernote. So this is my passion because when I first started, I couldn't afford tools. So you right. can kind of, you know, use a tool like an Evernote, which is kind of a, a blank sheet to create mm -hmm. all of these different components of your business. So a CRM in Evernote that you, you know, you kind of um, piece together would have, you know, the note title with the name and say the contact information. Then in the note, you can add all of these other details. You can add, you know, invoices on the sheet. You can add notes. You can add uh, spreadsheets, et cetera, et cetera. So if you, you know, if you feel like you can't afford a CRM or you want something super, super uh, basic and blank slate, you know, an Evernote, it, it, you know, there's really no rules. You just want to be able to manage your customers that's right. that's the core of, of, of a crm well also in evernote they can create separate notebooks so you know, if, they, if they want to use that as one of the resources each notebook can be a client right. and then Absolutely. that way you know you could just jump in to that client and do whether it's notes like you said spreadsheets or whatever you want to you know do with that. i promise kim i wouldn't go too into the details of evernote because we oh, would never okay. get off of this so <laughs> I will hold back. <laughs> well, can you get classes on Evernote, Lindsay? Because we see my like do. Well, I do. I, I've written I've written um, six books on Evernote itself, and then I do private tutorials and webinars and classes on Evernote. Wow. So yes, yeah. yeah. Check out my website. Thank you. 
plug your website again, girl. We Usable, need some blabs. Usabletech.co. I'll write it in the notes. I love blab. You can just write on the side. And well, you know, I, I want to add. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. At FemWorks, we use Zoho, Z-O-H, yes. uh -huh. so uh, and, and they have a pretty robust CRM platform, and it integrates, you know, with the website, and it can, you know, it's integrationable, um, so in a lot of ways, it plays a hub function for us, and it also has a mobile app, which allows me to take pictures of my business cards, and they're automatically uploaded into my Zoho CRM database. And so then there I'm, I'm able to automate emails that go out to people that I've met and what have you. So there's a lot of functionality with Zoho, but I think for me, what I'm encountering now is something that you said earlier, Lindsay, is that you started automating early. So I wasn't on that automating early train, you know, so I'm on that train now. But what would you say, you know, for someone that wants to get on the automation bandwagon and feel all the freedom that I know you are feeling still in Austin? Um, what, what areas should I focus on first? Well, I, I look at your needs, right? So what's like the biggest pain for you? Um, you know, like I said, for me as a digital marketing agent agency to be true to myself, I could not not have content going out through my social media. I see that all the time and it drives me nuts. You're selling yourself as a digital agency and you've posted once every two weeks. So for me, I always had this angst, especially because I was moving around about having constant contact uh content excuse me going out so the very first thing i did like that because that was my biggest pain was automated my content like i said i you know i looked at sources like the new york times in my and this is my industry mashable and i had that content going through my social at all times so that when i did land i could then engage like i wanted to or you know post something that i found but i didn't have the pressure of an empty account so that was my pain, right? So I tell people, fine, like, you know, what's the core thing? If you travel a lot and you say, you know, I have to submit an expense report and I have all these receipts and I look at Expensify. I mean, Expensify, you take a picture of your receipt and if it's under $80, it automatically captures that receipt. But you take a picture of your receipt and you can export an Excel um, spreadsheet of, of a time report. Um, and it's free. So, I mean, it's like, what's, you know, what's your pain? What's your pain? And, and then find, a, you know, a process around that. If this, then that, like I said, a free tool is kind of going to be the start to connect your tools in terms of automation. So, you know, a, a, and this is really small. I'm sure I have m many more problems than this. But, you know, I was going to the city a lot and I was always buying those umbrellas for five dollars off the street because it was always raining when I get to the city and I didn't want to throw them away and I had all these daggone umbrellas in my house and so I just looked at this like pile of umbrellas one day and I was so angry about it I was like okay I have to automate it right like I said I'm sure I had other issues going on but that was a pain point so I went on if this then that and I said okay I'm gonna set a weather alert and it's very simple. I get a text message at the beginning of my day to tell me what the weather is like. So I know whether to bring an umbrella or not. Do you know how much money I have probably saved? How many? Five dollars I have saved and added to my bottom line because of that one alert. And if this and that, you, uh, it automates some of the home stuff, too. So, you know, I bought my dad one of those home automation kits where, you know, if a football team scores, it can flick your lights or it can control your garage or, you know, fun things and, and really useful things as well. So and it's all free. So I would go to this and that look at some of the tools that are, you know, that it in integrates with and see what you can do to automate your life right now. And like I said, every category across the ball from social to hardware. 
So are you saying that if this, then that is a website I can go to? It's a website and it's also an app. So it's on Android and iPhone. Um, and you can literally just, and they're called channels, right? So the channels are what you would automate. So I'm going to automate my Twitter channel, my Facebook channel. Evernote has a channel. Um, you know, some of my Evernote processes are, um, I, have, I have clients that send a lot of emails. We can't be rude and unsubscribe from their emails. So mm -hmm. I have a Evernote automation where I have my client's emails going into a notebook. Now, you know, part of me being productive is that I have to make sure at the end of the day, I review the emails in that notebook. But this way, they're not a disruptor to my life. When you get those email pings at different times during the day and with, you know, this particular client, I probably get, you know, an email every 15 minutes. That's a huge disruptor to my business. So I have them go into a notebook and I review them at a certain point every day. That's it. So I, you know, I lessen my email load. And like I said, I don't have that disruptor. So there's, and, and that's all with if this, then that, and it's free. Yes, got it. Well, I have another question. I'm quite sure the audience would like to know this. As far as a, a creative entrepreneur, you like, what would be the best way to schedule your day? Because we could go back to what we were discussing earlier. We have uh, so many things that we have to accomplish in a day. And I mean, you guys have thrown out some awesome tools, but what would you say as, as far as advice that you would offer to your entrepreneurs um, for a typical day from nine to five? And, you know, even though they are an entrepreneur and they could do it whatever time they want, what type of organization schedule would you recommend to them to get it together, get organized? I would say make an appointment with yourself. Hmm. Um, you know what your schedule is. You have client meetings, you have email, your social media, all of your, you know, things that you have for the day. Put you on that calendar just as well as you do your client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say know thyself. So if you're not somebody that's going to do something every day, pick a day or two of the week and make that your planning time. Um, you know, my planning time, everything is an Evernote for me. So my planning time just starts in Evernote. Um, you know, I go over, you know, content that I've sent in. You can email into Evernote. So a lot of the times I'm on the go forwarding things there. Um, I go over that. I go over, you know, my CRM info. Um, you know, I look at tools. I'm always, you know, part of my planning is really um uh, reevaluating the tools that I'm, I'm currently using to make it, you know, make sure that they're still efficient for me and for my workflow, um, as well as looking to discover new tools. That's huge for me. I'm always looking to be, you know, more and more productive. Um, you know, I'll tell you, I'm, you know, I teach productivity, but my passion comes from the fact that I'm not a productive person. I'm not a very organized person. So my tools organize me. So you have to know your strengths and your weaknesses Absolutely. and flow with that. Right. Exactly. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And that's why I'm just sitting here trying to absorb everything that y'all are saying, because um, definitely I'm entering a phase in my life when operations is so, so very critical. Um, but I know, Michelle, you had a, a, a great question here, which was, um, you know, how important operational managers are. Like this not only applies to our day-to-day -day life and managing new contacts and managing products or projects, but this can help us better manage contracts and negotiations and and budgeting and just so many aspects of what it takes to, to um, keep your business running. Can you, speak, can you speak to that in terms of creating policies and ways of doing business that can affect just various parts of your business, not just your personal productivity? Let me or Lindsay? Okay. Um, I mean, it's, you know, kind of like, you know, same thing that Lindsay said is, is know thyself. Uh, once you know that and 
it's, it's really being realistic. You know, so many, you know, entrepreneurs, they have this big bubble of I can do all things and they're not realistic to the day to day. They're not realistic to I'm not that organized person or I'm not that creative or whatever it may be. And they fluff it up and try to do certain things. And then that's what harms them. Hmm. So um, once you know yourself is, again, you know, having those tools and being committed to every day when I get up, you know, if the first thing you do, once you turn your computer on, if it's Evernote, you go to Evernote. If it's your calendar, your email, whatever your process is, set it up. For Lindsay, she checks into Evernote every morning. That's her thing. That's her routine. And she set herself in that routine. For me, I hit social media first. You know, do a quick scroll, see who's doing what, reply, do mine. But I also have a social media manager as well. So that's my opportunity to reply, see what's going on or whatever new things may be out there. But again, I still have my, my uh, post being scheduled. So once you know yourself and the way you operate, then that's how you're going to be able to be successful and have a productive day. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to do it. Because if you try to do more than you can handle, that's what's going to harm you and not being conscious of your schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. that is so true. I mean, that was some great information, Melissa, because a lot of people don't realize how important it is to just organize your social media. A lot of them think social media area is just for adding what you sell and, and what your business is about. But you're supposed to create a story about your brand. And that's why we're here today to talk about the different tools that would help accessorize those ideas to help you have a better brand and a better story online, period, and be organized. Absolutely. I'm curious, you know, okay, all of you are paperless and you're geniuses now and you have all of this free time and whatnot, but let's go back. I mean, I know you guys, you have it together. I get it. For the rest of us, let's say it's day two. You know, I I just got my stuff together yesterday. Mm -hmm. What does day two look like? You know, I could imagine I've just implemented all these tools. I don't even, how do I even remember these tools that I've just, you know, implemented? What's some advice you can give for people who have decided, yes, have taken the next step, but just need some support getting into that routine every day, you know? What is some advice for those people like me? Um, I would, again, like, you know, meet meet them where they are. So if you're that person that's, okay, yes, I am a paperless expert, but I don't push everybody to go paperless. I will push you to cut back and I will push you to try to change your ways, but That's why when I do an assessment on a business, I don't only assess the business, I assess the client because that's going to make a huge difference on what you will and will not do. So um, once you meet where you are, so it's day two. Yes, you said, yes, we're going to do all of these tools. We're going to use them for X, Y, Z. First, you shouldn't have that many just starting because once you figure out what you're going to do, then we're going to create that hub. You're going to you know, be able to take your notes. You're going to be able to have your calendar. You're going to have your client database. You're going to have, I would say, no more than three and five will be stretching it. So you shouldn't have that many. But to get comfortable, we'll create a system to where not only will we put the websites so you can remember and then make notes to say what you're using them for and why. Put your ID, put your password. So you can remember to go back into those. And a lot of people get frustrated because, oh, I can't remember what password I did or what website it was or how I did this or how I did that. We will come up with a system that's comfortable for you. And once it's comfortable for you, you're more likely to stay with the program. You know, it's just like we give you an exercise routine. You're going to go, okay, it's the first of the year. I'm going to go and I'm going to work out. I'm going to do this. And then after a while, you're going to back off because it's going to be too hard. It's not your record routine. You just can't get into it. 
But if you find something that's, you know, can interest you and you see you can ease your way into it, you're more likely to stay with it. You're more likely to stay focused. And once you can stay focused and committed to it, then the rest is gravy. It's yeah. An easy ride. Yeah. So two things, use case and workflow, right? So when I said pain point, it's really finding, you know, your use case, like what makes you use the technology? So I always tell this story about my mother who is like the Twitter queen. I mean, she tweets more than I do. And it's because she found that she could access politicians easily on Twitter. I would have never gotten her to go on Twitter had she not found that use case that she was really passionate about. And she talks to them all day and they're a little tired of her, but that's what you can do with this technology. So, you know, find your use case. You know, my dad got into Twitter because he found that he could, you know, contact corporations when he had been wronged and talk to them on Twitter. And because corporations don't want to see those tweets publicly because it messes with their search engine optimization, they get right back to you, whereas they wouldn't on the telephone. So you're now talking about finding your use case. When you have a need, you'll go to technology. A lot of us are just kind of, you know, trying things out because people say or because we feel like we need to. When you sit down and really take heed of what those pain points are in your life, then you'll be passionate and excited about the technology. Um, the second word, workflow, is really what Melissa described. That's the routine. So we're not just throwing a bunch of technology out here to throw it. You need a workflow, right? You need to figure out, again, technology that works well together. You need to figure out why you're using the technology and how to flow from one piece of technology to the other. So that's why CRMs are good, because like I said, there's nothing more productive than me having a meeting schedule with a client but being able to go to this one place and then click, you know, click this link, go to my Google calendar, see my other appointments before I even made that appointment with them. Go here. And if we're talking about money, I can see all the invoices and what you owe me. I can, you know, so that's that's productivity and that's workflow. And your technology should talk to each other. Um, and that's what makes that's what makes this productive. Wow. Wow. Well, ladies, we got one question. We're going to go over just a tidbit. One last question um, that, that was asked. Can you ladies, after this Black conversation, do you mind um, sending um, a, a list of apps um, that we can be used to share with our audience afterwards? We would love to share it on this Blab and we're going to include your website and all that information if they have questions offline. And uh, we can give us some of those goodies. And um, I would like to say this was an awesome, awesome blab. I mean, very, very informative. I mean, great tools that I know that the Nord Business Hub fellows and any other people in our audience can use to for the betterment of their business. We want to thank you so much, Melissa and Lindsay, uh, for giving us some great insight today. Thank, thank you, for, you having for having us. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and I want to thank you, Michelle McClammy. Michelle yes. is usually on our team, more so behind the scenes. Uh, for those of you that are following uh, North Business Hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you have already interacted with Michelle McClammy because she's our social mm -hmm. media manager for the North Business Hub. So I just want to thank you for stepping up and being a co-host. Yes. Lending your creative talent even further for the North <laughs> Business Hub. So we are the ladies in red and gray. And, uh, <laughs> and on that plan, <laughs> I definitely want to encourage everyone to continue to follow the North Business Hub on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram and all of our social media platforms. Uh, stay connected to our website at northbusinesshub.com. 
And uh, to my fellows, Newark Business Hub fellows, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. at Rutgers Business School. And the rest of you, I look forward to seeing you all next week, Tuesday, at Rutgers Business School for Dissecting the Deal, which is our monthly platform and stage for America's top business executives in arts, media, and entertainment. They come and give us a behind the scenes on how to get deals done and how they've done it successfully internationally and nationally. That's next week, Tuesday, March the 29th at 4 p.m. It's a complimentary public lecture at Rutgers Business School from 4 to 5 p.m. And then there's a reception at 5 to 6 p.m. And that is complimentary, but RSVP is required. So come out next Tuesday for Dissecting the Deal with Randall McMillan. He's an attorney at Pandora Internet Radio. So he's going to talk to us about what he's done to make deals happen at Pandora. And that uh, he works for RCA and Def Jam Records. So that'll be a great lecture. And uh, stay tuned for the next Let's Grow Power Hour in April. And you can follow all of our events. We have the Dissecting the Deal. We have Let's Grow Power Hour. We have live session. We have it going on (laughs) at the Business Hub. And our complete calendar is available on our website, or you can keep, you know, touching base with us on Facebook. And we're just going to keep elevating media, arts, and entertainment entrepreneurs because that's what we do. Shout out to Rutgers Business School Center for Urban Entrepreneurship, Lanier Richardson, Jasmine Cordero, and our whole Rutgers University family. Uh, Have I missed? I've been... I'm trying to say everything. Have I missed anybody? Our entrepreneurs in residence, Jeff Billingsley, Tamara Fleming. Uh, We're doing what we do best, which is elevate and transform. Uh, Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. All right, that was fun. Are we offline? I don't know. Stop recording.